welcome back to the Screaming Cinema channel. My name is Max and we have a big unboxing today of my Barnes & Noble Criterion Sale Hall. Um, I think the Blu-rays are all stacked up this way, so should be a pretty good uh, unboxing here. I'm gonna just go through the movies, why I picked them, and then at the end of the video, I'll actually do an unboxing of all of them. So, should be awesome. Stick around, uh, let me know in the comments what you picked up during the Criterion Sale. If we have any matching ones or any of the ones that I unbox are on your wish list, let me know. Um, always fun to talk that and get new recommendations. So look forward to hearing what you think and go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. All right, first up we have Scanners. This is from David Cronenberg. I have Videodrome and I think maybe one other one from him, I can't recall, but um, I wanted to add this one to my collection after I watched Scanner Cop 1 and 2 from Vinegar Syndrome. Made me want to uh, revisit the universe again. So. Here's the movie, you can see the artwork there. It says it is a um, director approved Blu-ray special edition. And on the back side, you can see this there. This one's interesting, it's skinnier, it's a digibook, um, but pretty cool, we'll, we'll go into further when I unbox everything. All right, next up I have The Night of the Hunter. It's a collaboration with UCLA Film and Television Archive. This is the first one I've seen a sticker like that before, so that's interesting. But I've heard a lot of great things about this, especially the cinematography I'm really excited about. It's from 1955. It's got a new film transfer. Robert Mitchum, who I'm a big fan of. I've been catching more and more of his stuff, as well as uh, Shelley Winters, and it's directed by Charles Lawton. So here is Night of the Hunter. Sorry, trying to keep these small falling over in here. Only Angels Have Wings from Howard Hawks. This is one that wasn't on my list to pick up, but when I was going through all the movies, uh, it has Cary Grant and Gene Arthur. Um, I'm a, decent, a big Howard Hawks fan, so I was kind of excited about this one because I never really um, have seen it before. So it's spine number 806 there. And from 1939, 121 minutes. Um, traveling entertainer who gets more than she bargained during a stopover in a South American port town. So there's that one. Next up we have Blowout from Brian De Palma. This is the first of two films from him that I'm going to be sharing with that I just picked up. Uh, this is from 1981 and has John Travolta and Nancy Allen in it. really like this, uh, this artwork um, on the front. It's definitely unique. Um, I think De Palma works well with the Criterion Collection because this is a director approved um, transfer that was supervised by De Palma and got some new features with, uh, with himself and Nancy Allen on there. So that is Blowout. Next up, one that's been on my list for a long time. Um, I'm kind of, obviously you guys know, big horror fan. So working my way into buying all of the horror films in the Criterion Collection. And this one is the original Blob. I've watched, uh, actually I watched the Criterion scan on the Criterion channel um, when I had that. But it is a, it's a good movie. I really like the remake too um, from the 80s. But uh, 82 minutes long, nice get in, get out with a, uh, Who am I spacing on? Uh, oh, Steve McQueen, sorry. It was Steve McQueen, so that's that's a really good one to have, and I'm excited to add that one to the collection. Next up, I got this one on recommendation from co-host on the podcast, Preston. This is His Girl Friday. He, uh, I told him how big of a fan I was about um, The Apartment and a couple other films, and he recommended this to me. It has Cary Grant in it. It says it features Lewis Milestone's The Front Page and its newly discovered original cut as well. Um, but this is also a Howard Hawks film. And it's got His Girl Friday and The Front Page. So it comes with two movies, which is great. Moving on, we have James Caan, Michael Mann's movie Thief. Cool artwork on this. It kind of reminds me, uh, maybe it's just the text of it, but a little bit like Purple Rain. So... I literally know nothing about this movie. I just got it because I'm a big James Conn fan and uh, I've seen a couple Michael Mann movies. So I'm um, excited to check this one out. Moving on to a Robert Altman film and that is The Player. This is from 1992. It has Tim Robbins, 
Um, it stars Tim Robbins, has a couple other pretty big actors in it as well, but uh, let's see. Heroic supporting cast, Pete Gallagher, Whoopi Goldberg, Greta Scotchy, Dean Stockwell, and Fred Ward, and a lineup of star cameos that make for Hollywood who's who. So I'm excited about this one. Moving on to one that I've been looking forward to its release for a while here, and that is uh, Bon Joon Ho's Memories of a Murderer. There you go. Sorry about the glare. It'll be better when I do the unboxings. Um, ever since um, ever since Parasite made it to the Criterion Collection, I feel like I've um, been seeing more of his films come through. This is a director-approved um, Blu-ray, so that's always nice to have that little extra piece to new K4, uh, new 4K digital restoration as well. We're still going guys. I have got a half a box left here. So this is awesome. Uh, next up we have Vampire. This is a cool set. It's one of their bigger and nicer sets and it still was, I think just $20. But if you can see here, the set comes with a huge booklet, um, on the back. I don't know if it says how long it is. Uh, booklet with essays from critics. Kim Newman, Mark LaFanu, a uh, piece by Corber on the restoration, 64 interview with actor producer, as well as a book featuring Dreyer, Kristen Jewell's original screenplay, and the 1870s two story of Carmilla, the source of the film. So, really cool here. Next up, we have Being John Malkovich. I dropped it there. This is a movie that ever since I saw it, 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 it's, it's a weird fit for the Criterion Collection, but I like it a lot. Uh, I saw it for the first time and it just kind of like blew my mind. Obviously, it's an interesting movie and John Malkovich's character. He just has some of the most memorable, uh, you know, moments in, in film with his, his character. It's usually, you know, a supporting character or, or character actor role that he has. But um, this one, I mean, it's, it's an actor's real name as the title of the movie. Just can't get any weirder than that. So, um Spike Jones joint, so that is being John Malkovich. Have my second De Palma film here, and that is Sisters. This is from 1973. Spine number 39. Next up, we have The Uninvited. You can see there, from 1944. And that's spine number 677. All right, we have a Roman Polanski film, Repulsion. Um, I'd heard about this one recently. I can't recall. I think it was when I was reading the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood book, this this movie came up. But I, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I've never seen it before, obviously. You know, Polanski is is uh, is canceled. So, you know, you have to separate the uh, the work from the director. But um, I'm excited to, uh, to check this one out. And lastly, we have The Last Emperor. Uh, what I've been doing and a little bit of what I'm doing on, on some of these releases, I obviously had a way bigger uh, selection in my cart before I hit you know, pit by than, than I did, but I really want to get all of the, uh, the best, the best, uh, picture award nominees from the Criterion Collection. I believe there's nine. I have four of them so far, so, um, saving some for the next pickup here, but this is spy number 422. All right, so let's go ahead and start opening stuff up here. <clears throat> First up, we have the Last Emperor. So there is the case on here. It is from 1987, 165 minutes. This text on this is a little small, and especially with the background and the type. I think this is one of the older releases. So um, it just talks about the features on it. We have a new digital transfer approved by the cinematographer, audio commentary from the director, a uh, 53-minute film, called The Italian Traveler on the director's geographic influences from Parma to China and tons of other documentaries here. There's one, two, three other documentaries, three other interviews. So lots of features there. Let's check out the inside. You have Last Emperor. Comes with this booklet. 
I like the gold color there. It's like it goes through the chapters, the cast, and then there is a um, article by David Thompson. So there is the last emperor, and that is you can see here spine number four twenty two. Next up, we have Scanners. Director approved by David Cronenberg. Be a big pile of trash here at the end of this. <laughs> so let's take a look at this on the side. Let's see, we have spine number 712, Scanners. And on the back side here, this text is much easier to read. 1981, 103 minutes. You can pause there if you want to take a look at all the features, but it's a new 2K digital transfer supervised by Cronenberg. Also a documentary on the film special effects, interview with Michael Ironside, interview with Stephen Lack, uh, interview with Cronenberg from 1981. Um, and a also, oh cool, it comes with a 2K digital transfer of stereo Cronenberg's first feature film so I always like that when they have badass special features like that like a full you know ad additional film so that's really nice uh, that's really cool artwork so let's take a look at it this way and then on the inside booklet mind and matter by kim newman all right so there is scanners nice digi book um pop that back in there next up we have the night of the hunter from charles lawton this is a two disc Blu-ray special edition. Take a look here, we're looking at spine number 541. Robert Mitchum and Shelley Winters from 1955. It's 93 minutes long. Tons of info here, so I'll stop here if you wanna pause, but what we have is a new restored digital transfer with uncompressed mono soundtrack, audio commentary by a second unit director. Um, let's see here, new interviews, clip from the Ed Sullivan show, archival documentary, gallery sketches, and then in disc two, we have a two and a half hour treasure trove of outtakes and behind the scenes footage, a new conversation between Git and film critic uh, Leonard Malton about Charles Lawton directs, and a booklet featuring essays uh, by Terrence Rafferty and Michael, uh, Michael Scrogrow. So let's take a look inside here. Cool, I really like this. So on disc one, we have that. And disc two, we have Charles Lawton directs. You can see there we have hand with the tattoo. And checking out the other side. So it looks like it says love and hate. Nice booklet here. This is uh, definitely longer than, than the last one. So it talks about the chapters, the cast, has the uh, piece by Terrence Rafferty called Holy Terror. And then it looks like it has a second piece by Michael Surrao. Sorry, I'm pronouncing his name wrong there. So that's awesome. Nice set. Again, Night of the Hunter, spine number 541. Next up, we have Only Angels Have Wings, a movie by Howard Hawks with Cary Grant and Gene Arthur. I'm excited about this one. I'm excited about a lot of these, obviously, but just cool finally getting my hands on them, opening these up, and I'm really excited to start working my way through them uh, as I can, hopefully quicker than than last sale. I think I just finished the last movie I had for my last Criterion sale, so it took me a little bit longer than I thought. 
So cool artwork here on the front. Um, on the side, you can see spine number 806, Only Angels Have Wings. This is from 1939. Um, it's 121 minutes. Looking at the features, we have a new 4K digital restoration. Audio excerpts from 1972 between Bogdanovich and Hawks. An interview with film critic David Thompson. Howard Hawks and his aviation movies. A new program featuring film scholars Craig Barron and Ben Burt. We have Lux Radio Theater adaption of the movie, starring Cary Grant, so that's a cool radio version of it. And then on the inside, we have an essay by, again, Michael Surgrau. Got to figure out how to pronounce his name if he keeps popping up on these features. I hadn't seen him before, so he must be on um, some of the noirs or, or older films. But opening up here, oh man, this artwork is really cool. Check out that. Only Angels Have Wings. Looks like it's a stamp. Um on it. Let's pop open the disc so you can see on the inside here. Come on. There you go. And checking out the booklet here, it looks like it's going to be, yeah, kind of like a fold out one where we get some information on the transfer and cast, special thanks, a little picture there, and then on the other side, the, uh, the essay. Let's fold that back up. All right. So that is Only Angels Have Wings. Moving along here, we have Blowout from De Palma with uh, John Travolta and Nancy Allen. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I have such a good mix of movies I've seen and blind buys, especially with these. I feel more comfortable blind buying Criterion than about any other label just because I know what I'm going to be getting. I don't have to worry about the transfer. I don't have to worry about, you know, having limited features. Artwork always looks awesome. It just kind of comes down to taste on the movie. So this is a blind buy for me working my way through more of De Palma's films. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I really liked the artwork on this. As you can see there, moving over to the side, spine number 562. And looking at the back, movie is from 1981. It's uh, 108 minutes. And let's check out the features. We have a new transfer supervised by De Palma, an hour-long interview with De Palma from uh, Noah Baumbach. That's cool. A new interview with Nancy Allen. Uh, De Palma's 1967 feature, Murder a la Mode, which is cool. Another, another full movie. Uh, a new interview with cameraman Garrett Brown on the Steadicam shots. On set photos and original theatrical trailer plus a booklet. So let's go ahead and open it up. Got another shot of Travolta here. And we have a nice size booklet. Show you guys the uh, inside artwork here. There you go. I mentioned a little much larger booklet than before i always like those and they have the nice long essays um i don't know what do you guys do do you guys read the essays first or do you wait until after you watch a movie for the first time i feel like it might ruin it but it also might give you more uh, more details so there's the booklet for blowout moving along to the blob Let me grab my opener here I like how they did this, uh, this artwork on this. Looks like it's definitely from from its time, including the, the artwork here on the poster. Indescribable, indestructible, nothing can stop it. Um, I don't know who's seen the blob, but it's funny when you compare it to the special effects of the, uh, the remake from the 80s. It looks like a big thing of jelly sometimes. So um, although that's the case, Steve McQueen has a great performance in it. And I really like this film. Here's the side. Spine number 91, checking out the back here. 82 minutes of concentrated motion picture terror in blood curdling color from 1958. It is 82 minutes long. And looking at the features here, it's got a 4K restoration, mono soundtrack, two audio commentaries, one from a producer and film historian, the other um, by director Urban 
Eworth Jr. and actor Robert Fields. Also have a gallery of West Shanks trove of rare stills, posters, and props, including the blob itself, and a trailer, and then on the inside, an essay from Kim Newman. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. The blob. I like this. Get another poster. Looks like the artwork on the back is just a little circle there. And then we have It Creeps and Leaps from Kim Newman. And on the back side here, I have a picture and some information about the cast. And that is the blob. All right. We are still going here. I got a, uh, just so you know, I have this many left, so this is going to be awesome. Another Howard Hawks film, His Girl Friday. I put this up here. This is starring Cary Grant and Rosalind Russell. Again, this one was recommended to me by one of my uh, podcast co hosts. I'm excited about that. Um, Looking at the nice black and white still on the front there from 1940. This is spine number 849. Checking out the back. I think I talked about this um, previously when we kind of just went through my haul. But another one that includes multiple films, His Girl Friday, as well as the front page from 1931. Um, and looking at the two Blu-ray special edition features, we have digital restoration, 4K restoration of the front page, um, recently discovered print of director's preferred version with uncompressed mono, a new interview with uh, film scholar, archival interviews with Howard Hawks, new piece about the playwright and the screenwriter, radio adaptions, lots of stuff there. So let's go ahead and open it up. Oh, cool. So we have His Girl Friday and front page behind it there. This is cool. This is kind of reminds me of, um, what am I thinking of? the uh, Kubrick one, um, how it had kind of like the information uh, on the on the anti-war movie, but this is cool. It looks like a newspaper. It says, The Post saves Earl Williams. Impeachment proceedings launched against mayor in attempt to conceal governor's reprieve. So, I like this. It's kind of like even, even the paper feels like it's a newspaper. And that's where we have the information about the transfer, and we have photos, and we have production credits. So that's nice. I haven't seen that before, so that's really cool. And then inside here, you can see we have Gary Grant. Put that back there. Don't want to mess that up because I really like that. Next up, we have Thief. This is one where the disc is about to pop off. So let me uh, go ahead and put the disc back in place and so we can take a look at this. All right, so Thief from Michael Mann, starring James Caan. Love the artwork on this. Uh, this is from 1981. It is spine number 691. Check out the back here. 124 minutes long. Director approved Blu-ray special edition features include new restoration, audio commentary, interviews, uh, and a trailer. So this one doesn't look like it's as loaded as it normally is, but we do get a commentary with the director and the star as well as interviews. So... Um, you know, appreciate that, including an interview with, looks like one of the members of Tangerine Dream who helped contribute the film's soundtrack. So there is Thief on the inside. Looks like kind of a plain black background. And we have the essay by Nick James. And on the back side here, let's have some shots from the film. to the player from Robert Altman. <laughs> Excuse me. This is from uh, Tim Robbins. Uh, or sorry, this is from Robert Altman featuring Tim Robbins as well as a pretty huge cast. I remember this one is one of the ones that has um, lots of cameos and, and a pretty big cast to begin with. So... Um, a Hollywood executive with shaky morals, 
um, this caught in a criminal situation. So 1992, 124 minutes, new 4K transfer, audio commentary back from 92 with Altman and writer uh, Tolkien and cinematographer. We have an interview with Altman from 92, new interviews with Tolkien and Tim Robbins, David Levy, Kane's Film Festival, uh, or Khan's Film Festival press conference from 92, a short documentary about the shooting of the film, Map to the Stars, cameo appearances, deleted scenes and outtakes, opening shot with alternate comment uh, alternate commentaries, and an essay by uh, Sam Wasson. So here is the player. Check out what's inside. Let's see, we have cool disc artwork. I like that. And we have Tim Robbins here. In the name of all writers, I'm going to kill you. All right, cool. Um, let's check out what we have here. It's a little booklet. And that is the player. Spine number 812. Next up, one of the newer entries here. We're in the thousands with the spine. This is uh, Memories of a Murder from Bong joon Hoo. Director approved. It is spine number 1073. Really liked the artwork on this one. I've been looking forward to getting it. I knew I was going to pick it up in July once I saw the release date of it, but it is from 2003. It's his second feature. Um, what's called on the back is his breakthrough feature, but it is 131 minutes. Feature wise, we have a new 4K restoration supervised by the cinematographer and approved by the director. Um, 5.1 surround sound master. We have two 2003 commentaries, a new interview with uh, Guillermo del Toro, a new interview with Bong about real life serial killer who inspired the film, a doc from 2004 about the making of it, deleted scenes with commentary, interview with film scholars, Incoherence, a student film by Bong from 94, with a new introduction by the director, teaser, trailer, TV spot, and an essay. So this is definitely what you'd call a loaded disc, which I definitely can appreciate. Check out the inside here. It's two discs, obviously, to fit all that content. And see there. Here is the little fold out booklet with the essay by Ed Park. And it also features some artwork and information about the scan. And there it is. So I'm um, definitely excited to check out this one. Probably probably one of my most excited since I've never actually seen the film. I wanted to wait to catch it on Criterion instead of just go ahead and rent it after I really got into Parasite and some more of his work. So next up we have Vampire from 1932. So another oldie, uh, 73 minutes long on this one. And as you can tell right off the bat, it is a big package. Um, spine number 437 there. And you can see we have the um, digibook and the uh, large writing of Vampire. So let's take a look here. Features a digital transfer, an alternate version with English text, audio commentary from Tony Raines, documentary, video essay, radio broadcast, and a booklet with essays from critics, a piece by Corber on the restoration, an interview with the producers, and a book featuring the original screenplay uh, from the 1872 story Carmilla, a source for the film. So, way cool. Let's check out the disc first. On the inside here, have the disc, and it actually looks like it has a, a book already here, which is interesting. So, this is what features the um, interviews, and then here is the screenplay. whole entire thing so I think that's a really cool thing to add and really kind of makes this disc uh, kind of above the normal the normal uh, the ads that you have I think that's really cool I'm not sure when I'll get around to reading it but I definitely appreciate the addition of it um, as always with pretty much anything they can find on the movie to add and make it stand out so that is Vampire next up I have Bean John Malkovich from Spike Zone Jones director approved blu-ray Talked about this one a bit already at the top, but just a just a crazy movie. Um, John Malkovich is great in it as always. On the uh, cover work here, we have 
the eyeball with person crawling through there. Spine number 611. This is from 1999, it's 113 minutes. Uh, director approved special feature edition. Have a new restored transfer, 5.1 soundtrack. We have new selected scene commentary uh, with Michael Gondry, behind the scenes documentary. New conversation with uh, John Malkovich, new interview with Jones. Two films within the film. Uh, seven and a half floor orientation in America Alts and Culture presents John Horatio Malkovich Dance in Despair and Delusionment, an intimate portrait of the art of puppeteering, a documentary by Bangs. So just a loaded uh, loaded disc altogether. Looking on the inside here, we have artwork there and the disc as well as the booklet. And that is being John Malkovich. Finally winding down here, I think we have the last three coming up. First up, we have a uh, another film from De Palma, and that is Sisters. And it's fun opening this many movies, I love it. Um, here we go with Sisters. It is a Brian De Palma film from 1973. Moving to the back here, it is 92 minutes long. And looking at the features, we have a 4K restoration that's approved by director, uncompressed mono soundtrack, new interview with Jennifer Salt, bunch of interviews from 2004, audio from a 73 discussion uh, from AFI, appearance from 1970 by uh, Margot Kidder on the Dick Cabot Show, and an essay. To the inside here, you can see the disc and the artwork we have on the inside of the cover. Looks like it's a big essay here. And that is Sisters from De Palma, and that is spine number 89. Next up. I guess finishing off here with a couple horror films. We have Uninvited from Lewis Allen from 1944. This is spine number 677. Checking out the back here, 99 minutes long. Um, not a ton of features on this one. We have a new 2K restoration. We have a visual essay, which I love those. And two radio adaptions, both starring Ray Milland of the film and a booklet with an essay um, and an interview with the director. So opening up here, cool shot on the inside. Nice big booklet again. Got the chapters of the movie. As you can see, we got some photos and we have the article as well as the interview. So there is the uninvited. Wrapping things up here with our last disc. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I always, you know, it's fun to see what's inside these discs and, you know, share share my uh, hauls with all you guys as I like to watch your videos as well. So, really appreciate that. Uh, wrapping things up with Repulsion from Roman Polanski from 1965. Love the artwork on this one. It's spine number 483. Checking out the back here, 105 minutes long. His follow-up with his international breakthrough, Knife in the Water, with a chilling tale of psychosis. Have a director-approved Blu-ray with a high-def transfer, audio commentary, a British horror film, a documentary on the making of it, which is really cool, a 1964 television documentary filmed on the set with rare footage of them at work and original theatrical trailers, plus, as always, a nice booklet inside, so let's check that out. Pulsion headshot there on the inside. Looks like we're looking at cracks in a wall here. And the nice booklet. And that wraps it up, guys. So let me know which of these you own, which of these is your favorite, which is on your pickup list, what I should watch first. Um, just lay all these 
all these guys out here. So you can see, uh, definitely excited to get started and to check these out. So obviously the stack almost doesn't fit in the in the frame. So I am really excited and fortunate to be able to have this awesome haul. And uh, thanks for checking out the video. Obviously, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below for more content from me. And as always, appreciate it. Have a great day.